Welcome inside Crisis Center. My name is Jack Merlino. I'm along with Zach Corson. Andy Laidlaw will be on the call during the second half. This is another presentation of WCBN Sports. We have coverage of Michigan women's basketball versus the Northwood Timberwolves. It's the exhibition home opener. They open up against Western Michigan in a few days here. But we got the Northwood Timberwolves. Zach, first game of the season, some new phases for the Wolverines. What are you excited about for this Michigan women's basketball team? First off, I'm excited that Michigan Wolverines, the women Michigan Wolverines, are number five in the nation. Came out today, the AP poll. Preseason Big Ten poll, Michigan comes in at number two with the media and number four on the coaches poll. So some high expectations for this team. And watching them around and shoot around and in practice, I feel like, I feel like they can live up to it. Yeah, they, they lost some big faces, including, including uh, second all-time leading scorer in the program, Hallie Thom, and then Nicole Munger, and then they lost the all-time leading scorer, Caitlin Flaherty, two years ago. So some new faces on the team. The starting lineup for the Michigan Wolverines is Kayla Brown, or sorry, Kayla Robbins, Amy Doak, Akenra Johnson, Nas Hillman, and number 15, Haley Brown. Northwood will start off with Kenzie Seeley, Maisie Taylor, Hunter Batala, Adele Kemp, and Brooke D Ditto. And out of those Michigan starters, only two are returning with 39 of the minutes from last year up for grabs. Nas Hillman is the starting center. Last year, she came off the bench but led the team in scoring and rebounds. Yeah, Nas Hillman. 13.1 points per game and seven rebounds off the bench. The 6'3 sophomore at Ohio. Very big, domin or very big presence in the post for sure. And Michigan will lose the tip. And it's Northwood to start the game here at the Chrysler Center. And Michigan comes out in man-to-man -man defense. And Northwood looks like they're running some, some weave offense. It's Seeley who has the ball. Haley Brown on her. 15 on the shot clock. Great deny. And almost looked like Northwood's going to call a timeout. Ball's going to go out of bounds as Kayla Robbins almost runs into Kim's Barnes Rico there on the sideline. Michigan coming out in some high-pressure defense here. It's going to be Adele Kemp to inbound. 11 on the shot clock. Looking for Kenzie Seeley, and finally finds her before the five-second violation occurs. She drives left all the way past Nas Hillman. Kayla Robbins went for the shot block. It's going to go over the backboard, and Michigan will have a nice defensive possession to start the year. Nas Hillman with the defense there. Kayla Robbins getting the stop. And it looks like a Kennedy Johnson will have it. She drives left, finishes with her right. Oh, does not finish, and... Nas Hillman grabs a rebound. She's going to be grabbing offensive rebounds all night. And she does a good job of keeping the ball above her head and puts it right back up. She'll go to the free throw line for two. Nas Hillman, a beast on the boards. Like I said before, seven rebounds per game last year with, uh, with 5.9 of them. I'm sorry. Yes, 5.9 of them being offensive. Yeah, she, she's going to be a dominant force in the post this year for the Wolverines. And she, uh, she got a play under Hallie Thom last year, one of the best uh, big men for the women's program in the history of the program. So she got to play under a very experienced Hallie Thome, and she's, she hopefully can show what she can do this year in the starting lineup. She knocks down the first one, knocks down the second one, and Michigan's up 2-0. They come out in man defense again. It's Seely running the offense, and she's pretty quick. She likes to go to her left hand. Here's Kemp. She drives. She kicks. Ditto has it. A lot of penetration and kick here for the Timberwolves. Looks like Michigan actually comes down to 2-3. It's going to be blocked by Haley Brown. But Tala with this, this, the, the shot block, or the, the shot there. And Michigan, they like to do that. They like to play man. They like to play 2-3. They even come out in a press. So they're going to keep North, the Northwood Timberwolves on their toes today. And a charge is called. It's going to be number 31, Kemp, who drives in. Nice job there by Kenry Johnson. They get her feet set and takes a charge there on, on the drill presentation. Or excuse me, it was Kayla Robbins. She gets her feet set, and that's definitely a charge as we saw, saw it up there on the big board. Kayla Robbins has it, tries to find Nas down low. Ball knocked out of bounds. Taylor comes over to help. Seems like a theme they're trying to feed Nas Hillman here early, getting that leading scorer back involved with the start of this season. Let's see if they can get it, uh, if Michigan can get more to her as Dope the game progresses. Inbound. A Kenry Johnson shot fakes and drives all the way to the basket. That's just too easy for the senior. Taylor has it to Seeley. Back to Taylor. Michigan back into man to man defense. And we got a substitution. Strickland is now in the game. She was in the corner and she almost turns it over. It's now ball batter around. She gets it back. 
Eight on the shot clock. Ball's at the top of the key. Vitala drives. Haley Brown, pretty good defense and great defensive possession there by the Wolverines. And here they come on the other way. It's a Kenry Johnson leading the charge. She goes to her right, tries to find Nice Hellman. An ill advised pass there. And here come the Timberwolves on the other end. It's Seeley. She tries to go reverse, and Kayla Robbins, a senior, tells her to get that out of here. Michigan up 4 0, 8 12 left here in the first quarter. Michigan showing off their size early with three early blocks with yeah. Haley Brown and Kayla Robbins and Nas Hillman getting involved. The Timberwolves are definitely undersized in this game, and Michigan's going to use their size. They probably won't have that advantage in the Big Ten play, but in an exhibition like this, they're for sure going to use their size advantage. Kemp drives, kicks it. Seeley drives right and almost finishes over a Kenrit Johnson. Ball was tried. It was Hillman who tried to outlet it to Kayla Robbins. Foul call on the Timberwolves. First foul of the game. Number three checks in for the Timberwolves, Mackenzie Todd. Timberwolves play out of the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, Division II team. Michigan typically opens up both men's and women's against Division II team in the exhibition. Haley Brown has it up top. Amy Dilk, Indiana Miss Basketball in 2018. A really good addition to this Michigan team. Had a great freshman campaign last season. Kaylin Robin gets it, drive left, tries to finish right, foul is called. Kayla Robbins using her size to get to the basket there. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Kayla Robbins appeared in all 34 games off the bench last year, averaging 5.6 points and 3.3 rebounds. She did score in double digits six times in those games and finished the year off strong in the second round against Louisville, scoring 10 points in that loss in the tournament. And Zach, how about the senior leadership this year? Kayla Robbins and Kenry Johnson, two players who, you know, Got some decent minutes last year, but they're really going to be leading the squad this year with their senior leadership and with in the minutes they get on the court as well. I think it's very important for them to show that off because Michigan doesn't really have many seniors with those being the only two yeah. and them being really high contributors on this team. Kayla Robbins m misses the, the back end of the free throws. Michigan up 5-0, 7.33 left here at the Crisis Center. Michigan comes out back into a look like a man defense. It's going to be Seeley. She drives, she spins, tries to finish over Nas Hillman. Good defense there from Nas Hillman not to use her hands. Stays straight up, and Dilk is back the other way. Gets the Wolverines into offense. She calls a play. Haley Brown over the screen left. Dilk still has it. Haley Brown, the three-point shot, good. Haley Brown, the, three, the, the center for the Michigan Wolverines, or, or four, I should say, taking the three, and that's... She's showing off her wide arsenal of offense right she there. She shot 35% from three last year and makes that one. First shot of the year, first three, and it's good. And Kayla Robbins with a nice defense picks the pass off, and she finishes, and Northwood's going to call a timeout here. Michigan up 10-0, and this is exactly what you want to do as in, for, the, for the Wolverines. You don't let this smaller team come out and throw the first punch, and, they, and Michigan said, we're going to throw the first punch, and they went up 10-0, and it started on the de defensive end, in my opinion. Yeah, Michigan's been all over the defensive end in the passing lanes and blocking shots left and right. Northwood really hasn't even had a chance to breathe. No. This game for Northwood's really a win-win situation. They play against big competition. Northwood coming from a D2 school in the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. That's, they a, don't really, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it is a mouthful. G-L-I-A-C. <laughs> they, they don't play against these high caliber teams and no. so it's really important for them to play against teams like Michigan early on yeah. in the year to really get that experience. Uh, last year they did finish off well but they ended up with a loss in the quarterfinals of their playoffs. They went 13-16 and 16 overall with the 10-10 record in conference. A little bit about the Michigan Wolverines now. Kim barnes Rico, the head coach, enters her eighth season and she's the winningest coach in program history. She has 156 wins and is the only coach in history with seven 21 seasons. The Michigan, had a, the Michigan Wolverines had a 22-12 and 12 campaign last season, fourth in the Big Ten, and ended up making the second round of the NCAA tournament. The Wolverines have, haven't made it too far in the NCAA tournament under Kim barnes Rico, but they're definitely looking to change that this year with the senior leadership of Kayla Robbins and Ken Ray Johnson and some new names, some freshmen that I'd like to mention, Manny Nolan, Michelle Sider, and Isabel Verajao. Zach, what do you know about these freshmen that are coming in for the Wolverines? They can score, and they're highly touted freshmen. Coming in, Michelle Sidor. Michelle is, or I'm sorry, Isabel. Isabel is the number 12 recruit by All-Star Girls Report coming in. And then Michelle, Michelle was the Naismith High School Girls Watch. She was on the Naismith Girls Watch List for Nation's Best High School Player last year coming out of New Jersey. She was the second 
highest scorer in New Jersey history. Most points scored, second highest most points scored. And New Jersey is actually the home state of uh, Coach Kim Barnes Rico as well. So yes. coming from her home state. Yes, with 3,268. Very impressive high school career there. <laughs> oh my God, that Always is a, that is a lot of points. more than 26 points per game. Never scoring less than double figures in any game in her high school career. Crazy. Yeah, we're definitely and excited then, to see some of those freshmen. The final freshman. And then the final freshman, Maddie Nolan, coming from Zionsville High School. Not named after Zion Williamson. No. She was an Indiana <laughs> All-Star and 2018 All-State. And so Michigan's up 10-0 here, and we'll, we'll definitely see if some of those freshmen make it into this game. 6.41 left in the first. Wolverines up 10-0 on the Northwood Timberwolves here at the Chrysler Center. Michigan comes out in man-to-man -man defense. 16 on the shot clock. A lot of pressure defense here for the Wolverines. Seeley has it up top. She's taking most of the shots for the Timberwolves. She gets a double ball screen here. Goes right. Spins on Dilk. Goes back to her left. Shot fakes. Over the, almost over the backboard. Great defense there for Amy Dilk. And now here comes the Kennedy Johnson on the other side. And she stutters up there from a second, for a second. Maisie Taylor takes it from behind. Michigan will retain possession. As you said, it seems like Northwood, it's always in Kenzie Seeley's hands, the junior yeah. from Alma, Michigan. She started all 29 games last year, playing 33 minutes a game. Yeah, she, she likes to shoot her shots, and she, she definitely likes to go left, too. And I think Michigan found that on the scouting report as well. Amy Dilk has on the right wing. Nice cut there, or flash to the middle there from Kayla Robbins. They're looking for Nas Hillman. They doubled her, and, they, and Kayla Robbins does a great job of finding the open space and hits the shot. And Northwood has it. It's Mackenzie Todd up top, a little weave here. More weave up top for the, the Timberwolves. It's Taylor. She drives on Hillman and finds Todd outside and shoots the three and wide open. And, and Northwood likes to shoot the three, and Mackenzie Todd shows right there why she's one of the best shooters on this team. Now Johnson has it. She finds Robbins on the other side, and great ball movement there for the Wolverines. They pass it all the way around the perimeter. Haley Brown missed the three, and Nas Hillman, the 6'3 sophomore, just grabs that rebound and throws it right back up for the extra chance. Nas Hillman with four points and three rebounds already. Yeah, she is, like I said, going to be a dominant force this year, and she's going to have a great game tonight if she keeps that up against this undersized Northwood team. 15 on the shot clock. Mackenzie Todd has it. And she gets a ball screen coming here from Adele Kemp. Michigan switches. Haley Brown not on, now on Todd. Todd switches over to her left. And air balls to three. Great defense from Haley Brown to stay in front of the three-point shooter with a nice contest. And here comes the first freshman checking in for the year for the Wolverines, Isabel Verajao. Isabel Verajao, the niece of NBA player Anderson Verajao, is looking to make her presence felt here. And it shows with her height. Yeah, 6'5", the tallest of the team. Next highest would be Nat, uh, Nas Hillman. Dilk doubled up top, got the ball screen from Verajao. Dilk drives left, nice finish with her left hand, and she shows why, how good a penetrator she is right there. She can go left or right. Michigan up 16-3 here, 4.27 left in the first quarter. Ali Kaiser has it, gets a ball screen from Kemp. Nas Hillman pressuring Kaiser outside. She gets past Hillman. And number 44 gets it from the, the dish, and she'll get fouled down low. And Nas Hillman had to switch on that ball screen and kind of pushes Kaiser out, and then, and then Kaiser was able to beat her on the dribble. Nas Hillman maybe shouldn't be pressing that far outside the perimeter, and Strickland will go to the line to shoot two. Jayla Strickland, 6'2", sophomore out of Big Rapids, Michigan. A lot of Michigan natives here on this Northwood team, I'd say. Yeah, yes, Jayla Strickland was the backup center on last year's Northwood team, only playing about three minutes a game. But she, she didn't play much because they had a star center, Grace German, who played 31.8 minutes per game and didn't really leave much for the backup centers. Strickland misses both free throws. A Kenry Johnson now has it. Finds a cutting Verichau, gets tipped to Hillman, and she gets it, misses it. Verichau back up and scores. And Isabel Verichau with her po first points she As is a Michigan Wolverine, yeah. And it comes off an offensive rebound, and Michigan has been doing that all night. These Timberwolves really have to use their bodies and box out the oversized, or at least they are undersized in this matchup. The bigger Michigan Wolverines team taking advantage on the offensive boards. Another steal for the Wolverines. Kayla Robbins fakes pa the pass to, Kayla Ro or to Amy Dilk and scores. Michigan now up 18-4 with two, 
or sorry, 24 with 3.30 left in the first. And once again, Michigan starting their offensive charge on the defensive end. It's Kaiser. She gets a ball screen. And Nas Hillman switches onto her again. Kaiser likes to go right. It's stolen by Nas Hillman. Kayla Robbins picks it up and finds Amy Dilk in the open floor. Wide open layup. And Amy Dilk, the sophomore out of Indiana, fish, finishes 22-4. Michigan really opening up this game. What I've noticed is Michigan looks very good defensively here. They do. Getting their hands in passing lanes. And once another again, steal. another hand in the passing lane. It was Johnson this time. Dilk behind the back in transition. Tries to finish with the right hand on the left side. There's out right there. Back out to Kayla Robbins, and Michigan will reset and get their offense <coughs> in motion here. 12 on the shot clock, 2.50 left in the first quarter. Kayla Robbins being pressured on the sideline by D'Amelia. And a few substitutions here. And it's going to be Kenzie Seeley for the Northwood. Timberwolves, and then checking in for the Wolverines, number 33, Emily Kaiser, the sophomore, and number 24, Michelle Sider, the freshman out of New Jersey, another freshman getting her first minutes as a Wolverine here. She will wait until after the free throws to come in, but yeah. Emily, Emily Kaiser played 5.2 minutes per game last year, but she's going to be one of the first people off the bench this year, as you see. She had one amazing game last year when we sh she recorded six points and six rebounds and had one block against Detroit Mercy. Yeah, Emily K Kaiser is definitely going to have to come off the bench, like you said. Michigan has to fill that void of losing Hallie Thome, one of the best, best big women, not only in the Big Ten, but around the country. And just just like we said earlier, Isabel Verja standing at six foot five. Emily's the second tallest on the team, standing at six foot three. Michelle Sider, number 24, checks in. The freshman for the Wolverines, a very... Very dangerous threat from the outside. We'll see what she can do for the Wolverines here. 2.42 left in the first quarter. Michigan up 23-4 on Northwood. Northwood in their offense. A lot of penetration. It's going to be a turnover. D'Amelia tried to spin, but to no avail. And Danielle Rausch, the sophomore from Syracuse, New York, will check in. Like you said, Mich Michelle Cedor coming in, number 24. She, she's going to provide a lot of scoring off the bench. And she was the number 67 recruit in the class of 2019, as ESPN said. So high, another high recruit coming in for this Michigan class, and let's see what she can do. And here's Dana Rouse. She gets a ball screen from Kaiser. Turns back and finds Johnson for three, and a Kenray Johnson showing what she can do inside and outside. And Michigan has a lot of three-point shoes this year. Michigan. And Seeley with the nice pass inside. Dishes it off to number 32, Brooke Dito. And Seeley, really good penetrator, showing what she can do on the offensive end. Early on, Michigan shooting 71% from the field and 67% from three, showing off that they can score inside and outside. Yeah, very efficient start for the Wolverines offensively. 14 on the shot clock. Cedor has it. McHenry Johnson drives left. She kind of steps around there, no travel called, and she scores, finishes it with her right hand. A soft touch there with the floater from Johnson. And Seeley crosses over Roush and dishes again to number 32, Brooke Ditto. And Kim barnes Rico trying to tell Daniel Roush, you have to, keep, have to keep your feet moving and try to stay in front of Seeley. Really one of the only offensive threats we've really seen for this Northwood Timberwolves team. And we'll have, when we come back from the timeout break, We'll have Brooke Ditto coming to the line. Brooke Ditto is a redshirt sophomore from Madawan, Michigan. She was stuck behind Grace German last year. She's the starting, she's the starting big lady for today's game. She played 16.4 minutes per game last year with 5.3 points per game. But she's going she's gonna to be replacing Grace German, who scored 11 points per game. So she's going to have to step that up for Northwood to go back to the quarterfinals and beyond this year. Yeah, for sure. Michigan up 28 to 6, minute 33 left here in the first quarter. This is the presentation of WCBN Sports. Michigan women's basketball, WCBN Sports brings you live coverage of all types of Michigan athletic events, including women's basketball, men's basketball, football, softball, hockey, you name it. We also broadcast on 88.3 WCBN FM, along with our YouTube page. Brooke Ditto misses the front end. Not the best free throw shooting from either team tonight. 
an early game could be the excuse, but still can't be missing that many free throws as Ditto hits the second end. And Daniel, Daniel Roush pushes here. Minute 30 left on the clock here in the first quarter. Vergeau with a nice step to the right, quick step to the left, and finishes with the right hand. Seely brings it down. Daniel Roush is on her. She finds number 23, D'Amelia. Vergeau on her. D'Amelia crosses to the left, almost travels, lost her dribble. Now picks it up, 13 on the shot clock. Here's Seely. She cuts behind Roush, jump stops, and Kaiser tries to take a charge. And Seely stays with it and finishes. Nice bucket there from Seely. And Michigan runs down to the other end. Nice pass there from Roush. Tries to find Johnson in transition. Unable to finish. She was almost under the basket. And Seely comes down to the other end. Johnson with a steal. And it goes out of bounds. 45 seconds left here in the first quarter. Along with this amazing offense that we were talking about with the, with the conversion rate on offense, with the three-point field goals and within the three-point line, I'm really liking how Michigan is playing amazing defense with yeah. Northwood. Only 3 of 11 from the field, and they are shooting 50% from the three-point line, but again, 3 of 11, 27%. That's nothing. And then in the lane, passing lanes and with the blocks, Michigan's looking very good here early on. Yeah, Coach Kim Barnes-Rico places a huge premium on defense for this team, and she knows that defense can't turn to offense because she's got some quick players that can turn a defensive stop into a transition bucket. Seeley has it, tries to drive on Roush. It's number three, Todd. Seven seconds left. Cedar on her. Gets a ball screen. Todd, jump shot. Good. Swish. Verja with a contest. A nice shot there from Todd. Getting the shot over the 6-4 freshman Isabel Verja. 15 seconds left. Shot clock is off. Michigan will run a quick set here. Cedar has it. Finds Verja up top. Kaiser was trying to post up down low. Now Johnson has it on the far side wing. Roush comes to the top, couldn't handle the pass from Johnson. And the ball goes out of bounds. And we'll see if the refs call it dead. And that will be end of the first end of the first quarter. Michigan leads 30 to 11. Pretty sloppy game there from the Northwood Timberwolves. But you gotta give credit to this Michigan defense, which is who was up in a lot of passing lanes, and they were able to turn that defense into offense four in steals. the transition. Sorry about that. Four steals say. early on, two blocks, and six turnovers for the Northwood uh, Timberwolves. So, again, like you said, very sloppy, but very good defensive play by Michigan. Yeah, I said it earlier. You know, when you come out, when you come out to a game like this against an undersized and, you know, a Division II team, you really have to throw the first punch and, you know, let them know that, you know, you're, you're a top 25 team in the nation. You're not, you're not here to mess around. This is not a scrimmage. I mean, this is an exhibition, almost a regular season game, and Michigan did a good job of that, really starting it on defensive end and then having some really good efficiency on the offensive end. Nas Hillman started off really quickly to start the game. She had a few offensive rebounds, and then she kind of disappeared there. And some of these freshmen came in, including Verjao and Michelle Cedar, who contributed to the offense as well. Yeah, every it seems like everyone on Michigan is getting a look here. Yeah. Maybe that's why Nas Hillman wasn't really involved as in the later stages of that first quarter. Everyone but, I believe, Nat Maddie Nolan hasn't gotten in. And Danielle Rausch, she's an interesting case, a sophomore from Syracuse came in at the end of that first quarter. She didn't play much last year, appearing yeah. in only 4.6 minutes per game in, in those 22 games that she played in. She did have a great game for her Sanders against LIU Brooklyn, five points, four assists. We're looking for more of that this year as the number two or number three point guard on this team. And you bring up a good point there, Zach. There's, you know, after Amy Dilk, there, there's a few guards on this team, including Michelle Cedar, who's more of a shooting guard and less of a point guard. But there's a few guards that are going to have to step up and play behind Amy Dilk when she goes to the bench. It's going to be kind of interesting how that competition pans out for the Wolverines this year. And Michigan has a game against Danielle Roche's hometown team, Syracuse. That will be at ESPN, on I believe. 5th. Yes, it will be. That's going to be a very highly contested game. Syracuse has been a very good women's basketball program, yeah. along with their men's. They made the Final Four a couple of years back. Their man, men's and women's team made the Final Four. Men's losing to... North Carolina, yep. I believe, and then the women's making the championship but losing to UConn. I don't think yeah. you can expect them to beat UConn or anyone to beat UConn. Yeah, when you look at the women's basketball landscape a little bit, you know, you kind of got those top-tier teams, you know, UConn, Tennessee, 
Baylor. Uh, Baylor, Syracuse, South Carolina has been very good. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Michigan plays against Notre Dame yeah. as well this year, hosting them. So, you know, Michigan will get both those teams at home, two of those top-tier teams. And Michigan is really trying to become one of those programs. KBA, all-time winningest coach in, in uh, women's bas- or Michigan women's basketball history. And they're, they're moving up another 21 season. That's this eighth straight 21 season for the Wolverines. That's a school record as they'll start this 2019-2020 campaign in a few days here against the Western Michigan Broncos. Back here in the Chrysler Center, Healy Brown takes a shot from the top of the key just inside the three-point arc, just short. Todd comes down to the other end. Michigan up 30-11 as we start here, as we start the second quarter here, 9.37 left. Todd has it, and ditto. Gives it to number five, Kenizuski. Just checked in for the Timberwolves. Vitalo feeds steal. it down low and another steal. But the Timberwolves get it back. Some sloppy transition offense there for the Wolverines. And Vitala, or excuse me, Ditto will, tra- will travel. And that's three turnovers in less than five seconds. And that's they're up. eighth. Northwood's eighth Oh, of the my game. gosh. Already the second in the second quarter in 45 seconds. Kayla Robbins has it on the near side wing. Kaylee Brown trying to get a touch up top. Some pressure defense there from the Timberwolves. Nas Hillman gets it. Drives right to the basket and almost runs over a Todd. Nice Euro step there from Hillman to avoid the charge. A little shifty. Yeah. Shifty Nas Hillman there. Using her size to get down low and making a move. Exactly. Seeley has it for the Wolves, the Timberwolves up top. Finds Batala. Drives left on Haley Brown. Finishes with her left hand. Nice move there by Batala to avoid the block. 32-13. Michigan leads it. 8.36 left here in the first quarter. And Cedar gets her first three, and she hits it. Michelle Cedar with her first shot attempt as a Michigan Wolverine is a three-point basket, and she nails it. Kayla Robbins commits the foul. Seeley was driving right, and Kayla Robbins will get subbed out here as a Kenry Johnson comes in for the Wolverines. And how about Michelle Slider, that sweet shot, and hopefully we see a lot of that this year. Definitely. She's showing why she was a three-time USA Today All-New Jersey first team member and a McDonald's All-America Game nominee. She's going to provide much-needed scoring off the bench, but it may not be much needed for this Michigan women's team. As we've seen, they have many members who can just get in there, get in the game, get down low or around the three-point line, just score. And, and, and for people who have followed Michigan women's basketball the last few years, that's a little different than what it used to be. Two years ago, Caitlin Flaherty, all-time leading scorer, led the team last year. It was Nicole Munger and Hallie Thome, those two star players of the Wolverines that led the scoring. This year, it could really be anyone. I think that kind of makes for an, an exciting offense for the Wolverines this year. I think it'll be really good not to have to depend yeah. on one or two people, but just have everyone pitching in and maybe if one person goes off or two people yeah. go off, then that would be great. And, and it, sometimes that can cause problems at the end of games because you don't know who, you, who to go to, but in the kind of the bigger scope of things, I think it should help this Wolverine offense. Seeley drives past Cedar, and she airballs it. Number 24, Vitala, tries to save it under the basket, but her foot was on the line. Another turnover. Or actually, that's a just... Actually, that would be considered a turnover as <laughs> she was out of bounds. Dilk has it. Finds Johnson, not someone trying to get position in the post. Skip pass to Cedor, and she just goes off the front rim there. Missed three-point shot there. She hit one last possession, just short. And Seeley has it in transition. Drives, tries to drive left. Good defense there from Cedor. Johnson tries to jump the passing lane. Ball kicked in the corner. It's Taylor. Drives left. Kicks back out to Vitala on the far side wing. And Seeley will reset at the top of the key. Ten in the shot clock. A stagger screen at the top. Seeley drives past Cedar, and a nice finish there. That stagger screen looked like it confused Cedar there for a second, and Seeley had the step, and she scores. 35-15, Michigan leads it. Seeley has four points in today's game, only two of eight scoring. Yeah, she's With Nas Hillman getting that point there yeah. down low. Seeley, more, her, her game is more about passing, leading the team in assists last year with 3.8 to go along with her 10.1 points per game, which was good for third on the team. So they're going to lean on her this year for scoring as well as passing. As we've seen today, the ball is going to be in her hands for yeah. most of their time on offense. It seems like the Timberwolves kind of move the ball around, and then with a few seconds left, they give it back to Seeley to take the last shot. But this time it's tied at the top of the key. Haley Brown's on her. Inside out, drives right, finishes, or goes up with the right hand, misses it. Strickland tried to put it back up, but Michigan comes back out with a defensive rebound. Dilk pa- passes ahead to Cedar. 
And nice pass there from Cedor. Finds an open Nas Hillman down low. Nas Hillman with eight early points, three of four shooting with three rebounds. Two coming on the offensive end. Seeley brings it up across the black M for the Northwood Timberwolves. It's number three, Todd finds Strickland. Some good ball movement here. Timberwolves trying to get into something. Dilk has Seeley in the corner. Dilk, a really good defender, uses her body. And it's going to be 24, Cedar. She goes, tries to go inside out. And it's going to be a block called. She had Haley Brown there for a second, decides to keep it. And a foul is called on number 21, Taylor. Looks like Cedar is going to go to the line to shoot two. And we have Maddie Nolan coming in, the freshman from Indiana, Zionsville, Indiana. She's coming in. She didn't play much as a senior. She was injured for most of the season. She played five games, averaging 13.6 points, 3.8 rebounds, and three assists coming back from injury. But what really made her noteworthy and on the radar of Michigan women's basketball was her junior season when she averaged 21.5 points. Yeah, a lot of these highly touted recruits, you know, they, they get their offers even junior year into high school. You know, college recruiting starts earlier and earlier for some of these star athletes. As Maddie Nolan checks in, along with Emily Kaiser for the Wolverines. Michigan up 41-15, 5-51 left in the first quarter. Northwood has it on the offensive end. It's going to be a foul called on Maddie Nolan, the freshman out of Indiana. Diving for that loose ball. I'd like to see the aggressiveness out of these freshmen in their first appearance appearance at Chrysler Center. Chrysler Center has a pretty good crowd for an exhibition game against a D2 team, I would say. Free admission. That should do it. That's right. Yeah, Michigan had a few coaching changes as well. Melanie Moore, the associate head coach last year, will head to Xavier, or she headed to Xavier in the offseason as a head coach. And Toyel, Coach Toyel Wilson, who spent the last season at National Championship Baylor, or National Champions Baylor, will coach the Michigan Wolverines as an assistant coach. And Harry Rafferty, this, the GA, coming out of the G League, actually, will be the graduate assistant for the Wolverines. So Kim barnes Rico with a few coaching changes under her <coughs> direction. Turnover for the Wolverines. A travel called there on Amy Dilk. Seeley has it. Another staggered screen at the top of, at the, top of the key. Seeley finds Kaiser down, or found Kaiser standing right down low. Passes it back out to number 24, Vitala, who misses the three. Dilk leading in transition for the Wolverines. Finds Nolan who almost traveled there outside, and she finds her own rebound, and then finds Nas Hillman down low, and Maddie Nolan does not stop after missing the shot, fights for another rebound, and finds Nas Hillman to go to the line for two. Good job by Maddie, Maddie Nolan following her shot and dishing it off to Nas Hillman there at the line now for two. Nas Hillman with 10 points on four or five shooting with four early rebounds, and we're only in the second quarter, halfway through the second quarter. Yeah, what, what amazes me about Nas Hillman, I mean, she's obviously you know, a very, very, very big post player, but she always finds her, she always seems to be in the right place at the right time, and that's a huge key as a post player because, you know, it allows your guards to find you in the right spot, and then she, she does a good job of finding open space and then finishing, keeping the ball above her head and putting it right back up, and especially against an undersized Northwood team like this, she's going to have a dominant game. As a freshman last year, Nas Hillman was amazing, but her only weakness, I would say, was free throw shooting, where she, yeah. shot, she shot 63% from the line, and she just made one of two there. So I would, I would like to see if she could uh, improve that, and if she did over the summer, because if she gets that going, then her game will have no weaknesses. Yeah, you know, she, and you know she's going to get to the free throw line a lot this season with how dominant she is in the posts. Media timeout here at the Chrysler Center. Michigan up 42-15 with 4.56 left in the first half. So you were talking about Kim barnes Rico and hiring and, or losing some members of the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Along with that, they all, Michigan also lost their starting, um, starting shooting guard, sophomore of last year, Deja Church. She transferred to DePaul, a little surprising. She played the third most minutes last year, so it definitely wasn't as a result of uh, no. a, a low amount of playing time. But she helped. She, as I said, she was the third most in minutes, and she helped lead Michigan to the second round of the tournament. So Michigan's going to have to do a good job of replacing her with the shooting guard now in uh, Kenray Johnson. Yeah. She's a senior, so she won't have many, much difficulty 
But as we said earlier, the depth really plays a role here. Yeah, some and of these new freshmen coming in, in are going to definitely have to step up with only two starters returning, like you said, and then losing a transfer as well. As uh, G. Sambier takes a free throw shot here. Part of the big house. I don't know what you, big house uh, activities between media timeouts. He is not missing. No, nope. he's not. As I say that, the announcer is doing, he just missed. <laughs> two, two straight, he's missed. Make that three. And, you know, going back to Deja Church, you know, that's just something that, you know, teams have to deal with. Uh, any college team has to deal with. You know, the, men, the men's team has it. The women's team has it. All sports have it. And, you know, for what are, you know, it's not always playing time, like you said. It could be whatever. You're going back to your hometown maybe, uh, maybe trying to switch programs, switch coaches, switch, you know, philosophies you want to play in. Um, you do have to deal with it. And it's a never-ending process with transfers and all the recruiting you have to do. Yes. while also focusing on your season. Because a lot of the recruiting does happen during the season. That's why you have a lot of assistant coaches who go out and recruit during the week and you take care of practice. Um, you know, it's not easy being a college coach. And, you know, kind of going on a tangent here, that's kind of one of the reasons why a lot of people believe John Beeline left college basketball because he just kind of wanted to really focus on basketball and the scheme he wants to implement right. and having to deal with all the, the rule changes and all the recruiting. It's a never-ending game for these college coaches. Speaking of recruiting, this Michigan team out here, Involve, it has, has nobody from Michigan. It's yeah. Three players from Indiana. Quite interesting. And Deja Church was from Michigan going back to DePaul. Uh, DePaul was a team that recruited her. That coach made, made, a, made an impact on her. Yeah. And then going there now for a junior year. Back to action here in the Crescent Center. Kayla Robbins has it. Finds Isabel Verjao down low. Pass came from Emily Kaiser, actually. And Verjao. Nice job finishing down low. Michigan up 44-15, 4.30 left here in the first half. It's Vitala. Drives on Danielle Rausch, the sophomore. Nice finish there from Vitala with her left hand. Through the contact, and she'll have a chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. And Priscilla Smingi, the junior out of Jacksonville, Florida, will check in for the Wolverines. Smingi with limited playing time last year. We'll see how much minutes she gets off the bench this year. Hunter Vitala at the line now for Northwood. She started all 27 games that she appeared in, not appearing in the two others that they played. And she had 8.2 points per game, which was good for fourth on the team, along with five rebounds. And that was second on the team, trailing the center, Grace German, who's no longer on the team as she graduated. She misses the free throw and does not convert to on the three-point play. 44-17, Michigan leads it. Maddie Nolan dealing with pressure on the far side wing. Roush up top. Smingy has it, looking for Verjao down low. Skip pass, Nolan. She drives left. And it's going to be a charge called. Maddie Nolan tried to find Verjao at the top of the key after driving, but it was number 24, Vitala, who takes the charge for the Northwood, sacrificing her body. 409 left in the first half. Kaiser brings it up for the Timberwolves. Looking right, a few screens to the right side. D'Amelia has it, drives left on Maddie Nolan. Jump stops, almost traveled there. Back cut there from Vitala. She finds number four, Kaiser in the corner for three. Just misses it. Offensive rebound for the Timberwolves. Kaiser has it again. Number 31, Kemp takes a three. Air ball. Decent defense there from the Wolverines. A, pr a few open shots. And the Timberwolves really just can't go any get anything going offensively. Pretty good defense by the Wolverines. And they're hearing it from the band chanting air ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nolan has it. Kaiser up top. Tries to find Verjao down low. Daniel Roush gets the ball screen. Verjao turns around, spins, quick, can't get it to go. Kaiser with the offensive rebound, kind of got tangled up there with Vitala. Foul goes on the w Timberwolves. Only the, s only the seventh foul of the entire half. Michigan has four. That's the Timberwolves' third. Pretty clean and quick game here so far. You got to realize it's an exhibition match for the referees as well. Not saying they called a bad game, but... Not, not too many foul calls today. 
usually women's basketball, but I feel like there's more than seven foul calls and a half. Roush to inbound below the basket. Nolan all the way across. And Verja with the quick cut. Kind of got her defend it, def defender, or caught her defender off guard. Verja puts it up quickly. Michigan 46, Northwood 17. Isabel Verja showing off that offensive, offensive play with eight points yeah. on four or five shooting in only seven minutes. The freshman from Brazil with the stop in North Carolina, like you said. Very highly touted recruit for the Wolverines who will probably get a lot of minutes if she keeps that up on the offensive end. I would say she's the first person off the bench. I'd agree. Rouse drives. Nice dish there to Verjao. Verjao once looks. again in the right place at the right time, but Daniel Roush with the court vision right there. 2.30 left. Danielle Roush now with three assists in five yeah. minutes. She hasn't attempted a shot yet, but she's making her impact felt on the game with this passing and that court vision, along with defense. Really doing a good job of filling in for Amy Dilk, who is on the bench right now for the Wolverines. Travel called on the Travel call on the Timberwolves. Another turnover. Make that and 10 on the game for the, Northwood. Yeah, and the night continues with the turnovers for the, <laughs> for the Timberwolves. Rouse starts offense on the right side. Smiggy pops up to the top. Was looking for Kaiser. Rouse denies the ball screen. Finishes with the right, or goes up with the right hand. And Verjao there again. Just grabs the offensive rebound over to Milia. And it looks like we got some sisters on this team with Ava D'Amelia and, so and Sophia D'Amelia, freshman and sophomore out of New Boston, Michigan. At the line, we have Isa Verja, who got that pass from Priscilla Smingy. Smingy didn't play much last year, appearing in 16 games, only scoring 1.3 points and 0.6 rebounds per game. She was academic all Big Ten, though, so she's got that. And then she did have a great game against Marquette. A pretty high-profile uh, opponent last year. She scored 12 points in 13 minutes, shoot, making two threes and shooting five for seven from the field. If Michigan can, th can get that production from her, That's I think that Michigan is going to be a very, a very good team and scary for opponents to play this year. Yeah, Smingy, one of two juniors on this Wolverine team, along with Haley Brown. Smingy has it up top, picks up her dribble, and Roush... Throws it over to the top to Kaiser. Nice finish there. And Roush with another assist. Really run the point guard position well for the Wolverines. Kaiser has it. Cedar, good defense. Doesn't allow the penetration to the right. D'Amelia has it. And a nice steal there. Verjao got her long arms on it. And Roush looking for Cedar up top. And she kind of lost it, steps out of bounds. Roush forced it ahead. And, you know, if you're going to turn the ball over, I'm, I'm fine with being aggressive with it. Roush is trying to be aggressive in transition, which Mi Michigan has had a lot of success with tonight. 117 left here in the first half. Michigan leads it 52-17 in this exhibition match over the Timberwolves out of Northwood. Kaiser playing good defense. D'Amelia drives to her left, and nice finish there. And Kaiser was really, or excuse me, yeah, Kaiser was really f forcing her to go to the right. But, uh... D'Amelia just drives back to the left and finds an open lane. Cedor got a ball screen from Roush. It's going to be a blocking foul called on the Timberwolves. Number 23, D'Amelia. That's Sophia D'Amelia. Michigan's out rebounding Northwood 22 to 9 using their height. Michigan has two players on the court right now taller than any player on Northwood. And Isabel Verja, who's six foot four on the Michigan website, but she says she is six foot five. And then we have <laughs> Emily Kaiser, six foot three. Cedor misses the front end of a double bonus. Now I'm not exactly sure how the bonus works in <laughs> in women's NCAA basketball, but I thought that would have been a single bonus there with. Only five fouls on the Timberwolves, but I guess I gotta check up on the rules book. <laughs> five fouls for the Timberwolves, four for Michigan. So pretty even there, but definitely not on the scoreboard. Kaiser drives left. Todd tried to find number 32, Ditto down low. Ball tipped out of bounds. The Timberwolves will have it with 17 left in the shot clock down low, inbounding below the basket. It's Todd. Michigan in man-to-man -man defense. Came out in a two to three zone to start the game and kind of has switched back to man since then and they've gotten 
they've gotten a lot of steals in that man defense, so they're sticking with it. Todd to inbound. Daniel Roush has, is guarding the inbounder. It looks like uh, Todd stepped stepped inbounds on the on the on the uh, inbound throw, which is <laughs> illegal. It's Not allowed. <laughs> She stepped inbounds, which makes it out of bounds, I guess. <laughs> Michigan gets the ball. 11 shot, 11 second shot clock and game clock differential. 14 on the shot clock, 13. Verjao rolls the screen and finishes with her left hand. Another assist coming from Roush to Verjao. She was looking like she was going to dunk that. Yeah. She almost did. I'm not sure if she yeah. can dunk, but. Shot clock is off. Nine seconds. Kaiser drives left, jump stops. Kicks it out to Todd. One more pass out to number 32. That's Ditto. And she. Kaiser showing off that length with that block. Yeah. Nice block there. Two seconds left. The, Wol or the Timberwolves will have it below. Todd to inbound. Have to be a quick shot here for the Timberwolves. Todd inbounds it. One second comes off the shot clock as it is batted out of bounds by the Wolverines. 1.1 left. Verjao showing off that length. First we have Kaiser, then we have Verjao. Twin Towers. Todd to inbound from the sideline with 1.1 left. Looking for Kaiser up top. She has to get her in. Ball batted around. They get a shot off off the side of the backboard. And that will end it here in the first half. Michigan wins the first half 55 to 19 over the Northwood Timberwolves in this exhibition match. You know, it started in the defensive end. That was the key to the first quarter. In the second quarter, Michigan really started scoring. You know, it was actually some of these freshmen, including Cedor and Verja, who came off the bench and got a lot of quality minutes in the second quarter for the Wolverines. Cedor getting most of her points from the line, three of four there, and then a three-pointer, accounting for all six of her points. And then we have Isabel Verja putting in 14 on six of seven shooting and two of two from the line to go with three rebounds, leading the team with 14 points, almost tying Northwood. Yeah. He's scoring alone. Northwood with 19, Verjao with 14. Hillman uh, knocking in four of five field goals, accounting for 11 points, and three of four from the line herself with four rebounds leading the team in that, st in that statistic. Yeah, what a game so far from Isabel Verjao, the freshman, the true freshman out of Brazil. And I'm not sure in terms of Kim Barzarico's strategy here, if she's playing Amy Dilk or not Hillman as much as she would in a normal regular season game. But you know, with the way Vera Zhao has been playing, she's going to get a lot of minutes coming off the bench. Probably, like you said, the first off the bench whenever Nas Hillman either gets into foul trouble or is tired. But what a, what a first half performance from Vera Zhao. Yes, uh, Isabel Vera Zhao is leading the bench players in minutes, uh, minutes off the bench in this game with 10. And... And she's even out, out um, playing. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, a Ken, I'm sorry. A, a Ken Ray Johnson. A Ken Ray Johnson has 12 minutes. Yeah. And that's Haley Brown. Haley, right there. Haley Brown. Haley Brown has nine minutes. Yeah. So she, she actually left the game for a second, but it looks like she came back on the court. And hopefully, we'll see her in the second half. But a big difference, along with the field goal percentage, with Michigan shooting 68% north or 29%. Yeah. And from the line, Michigan 10 of 14, Northwood 2 of 5. Turnovers, Northwood 12 turnovers, Michigan 5. What's really standing out to me is the points off those turnovers. Yeah. Northwood only scoring two points off the, off the five Michigan turnovers. But Michigan using their speed and their length and making a making an impact off those 12 turnovers, scoring 20 points. Wow. 20 points. So that's only two turnovers that they haven't scored points off of, that they haven't converted. So I feel like that that's a big difference. That's the story of the game, in my opinion. It I mean, is. 20 points is more than Northwood has all combined. So Michigan really turning defense to offense very efficiently. Yeah, that's right. 20, 20 points for off turnovers and only 19 for Northwood all game. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, what it's like the like the Patriots defense? Yeah, turning defense to offense. Yeah, that's that. You know, if if Tom Brady never took the field <laughs> this year, the Patriots would be four and three or whatever <laughs> the record is. Unbelievable. Yes. Yeah. So that will end our first half coverage. Andy Laidlaw will have a call in the second half, either 
Zach Corson and myself, Jack Molina, will join you in the second half. Thank you for listening to WCBN's presentation of Michigan women's basketball. Michigan leads it 55 to 19 after the end of the first half. We'll be back for the second half.
And we're back in the second half, start of the second half with Michigan and Northwood. Michigan leading 55 to 19. Northwood starting off. Kenzie Seeley dribbling the ball past the top of the wing, getting the ball back. Uh, dribbling past 21 on the wing. With a Ken Ray Johnson guarding her back to the top. Weaving through the defense, finds a seam, dribbles down, pass down low, and layup is no good. Haley Brown with the rebound, passes out to Amy Dilk. Amy Dilk going down the sideline, looking for someone to pass her, looking for an outlet. Dri picks up a dribble at the wing, pass down to Nas Hillman, and foul on Northwood. Nas Hillman, common foul, it'll be taken out on the baseline. Yeah, you gotta love Michigan's uh, post play, especially there in the first half. We saw we saw Vergeau absolutely just dominating. Six to seven from the floor, 14 points, two to two from the line. Everybody inside the paint is just really, really good today. Nas Hillman looked great. We saw we saw Haley Brown in there for really a couple a couple minutes. She hit that big three, but man, the first half, the Michigan post game has looked really, really phenomenal. Done a great job in the paint, defending well, and quick out here to start the second half. Haley Brown getting the inbound, missing the layup. Northwood with the rebound, dribbling down the court on the fast break. Stopped by Kenray Johnson, out to the corner for three, and it is another air ball. That's the fourth of the game yeah. for Northwood, and we hear the band chanting air ball once again. Well, it's really tough for these Division II teams coming in these, in, in, in these exhibitions game. Last year, Finley did it, but in, in the GLIAC, they obviously don't play the competition in the Big Ten. I mean, you have Grand Valley State, Saginaw Valley, Northwood, Northern Michigan, all these teams around the state of Michigan, Lake Superior State, a bunch of teams, Fair State, a bunch of teams around here, and obviously they don't have the same competition level. They come out here, and, and Michigan's going to close out shooters faster. They're taller. They're more athletic. It's a lot more difficult to shoot. And today, like you said, those four air balls, Northwood, are really, really starting to show up on the scoreboard. And Michigan with the ball now, with Haley Brown, pass to Amy Dilk down low. And it is a foul on Northwood. Michigan gonna take the ball out under the basket. Amy Dilk will be the one taking it out. Yeah, and Amy Dilk starting off exactly where she left off last year. We know Amy Dilk is such a great passer. She finds people inside, outside. She's very quick off the dribble. So far early looking really good and also. Kayla Robbins driving on the left, finishing, not finishing with the left. And Northwood with the rebound, pushing the ball up the court. They've got numbers, and it's a foul on Michigan. Common foul. Northwood will take the ball out on the sideline. It, well, when you look at this Northwood team, and it, it, this score obviously tells Michigan's winning this game huge, and that's kind of what we expected here in this exhibition, 55-19. But this Northwood team really is, it, it's really quick, and it comes from the two Kenzie girls, Kenzie Seeley and Kenzie Todd. Those are two girls who are very, very quick off the dribble, and have had a couple times where they've gotten by this Michigan defense, but obviously the post game in Michigan has prevailed. It has. Northwood with the ball, 11, 10 seconds left on the shot clock, dribbling down at the box, and a Kenzie Johnson with the foul, trying to cut off the Northwood player going to the right wing, and it was a blocking foul. Shot clock will be reset to 20. This is a new rule in women's college basketball. Mm -hmm. It won't be reset all the way to the normal 30, but just like the NBA, how yeah. it is set back to 14, women's basketball is set back to 20. Yeah, I, I like that. And it's it, it, a lot of, we see the NBA work very well. It gets the pace going, and it's, it's a good move here for women's basketball. And another layup attempt blocked by Michigan. Haley Brown with the rebound, and it's tipped out of bounds. Michigan ball. Yeah, very interesting. Northwood. That last possession, Michigan jumped back to the 2-3 zone that we saw a little bit earlier in the first quarter. And, and the possession before the last, Northwood had a very good job of swinging the ball around the perimeter. On that last possession, they dumped in the middle. And obviously, once you get in the ball middle, you look opposite, you look back in the wing. And uh, Northwood's girl just sat right in the middle. And once that happens, everybody collapsed, and Michigan forces a turnover. Haley Brown with the ball at the top, passing down low to Nas Hillman. Nas Hillman finishing with ease over two defenders. Nas Hillman with 11 points on the day. Make that 13. Yeah, the cold Big Ten player, or the cold freshman Big Ten player of the year last year, obviously jumping back in that quick foot this year. And an and one for Northwood. Northwood going to the line, their first points of the half. It is now 57-21 with one coming for Northwood. Again, very foul on, no, not foul on Nas Hillman. Yeah, again, very like, like we we're talking about earlier, very quick. This Northwood team is they are very, very fast. They get the ball, they get in triple threat, and they drive to the hoop with, with ferocity, with quickness, and again, get to the lane, draw the end on big bucket there for the Northwood Timberwolves. Plus one for Northwood. Amy Dilk dribbling down the court, pass to a Kenray Johnson. Pulls up with the little jumper, and it's good. 
Ken Ray Johnson getting on the board in the second half here. Northwood dribbling to the wing. Pass up top, a Ken Ray Johnson defense. To the wing, looking to shoot. Doesn't shoot, pass back up top. Again, the Wolverines dropping back in a 2-3 zone here. And hands on the ball, but it's batted around and picked up by Northwood. Northwood pulls up and shoots the free throw jump shot. 4-2. Amy Dilk pass on the wing to Haley Brown, pushing the ball up. Haley Brown drives and misses the layup. Northwood with the defensive rebound, pushing the ball up the court. Four on two. Oh, and that's a blocking foul. Blocking foul on Kayla Robbins. It, it sure looked Maisie Taylor. She got the ball on the wing, drove to the lane. It sure looked like she stuck that elbow out, but Kayla Robbins called with a block nonetheless. And, and we just saw it there on Michigan's possession down the floor. They really have a really high up tempo offense today. Um, it, it's been pretty effective. And you, you know Kim Bartzerico has always been a coach that loves to keep the tempo up, and Michigan's done that so far today. And we have Brooke Ditto dribbling the ball and losing it. Number 14 of Ken Ray Johnson with the steal. Passing to Nas Hillman, posting up, turn around, and she's fouled before she goes up for two. She'll be, uh, I believe it'll be Amy Dilk taking the ball out under the hoop with 25 seconds left on the shot clock. 6.38, 6 minutes, 38 seconds left in the quarter, 59 to 24 Michigan yeah, leads. We're seeing a lot of fouls here in the second half. Both teams with four. All of Northwood's four fouls coming inside the paint. Amy Dilk just missed a three-pointer from the corner. Northwood passing it up and shoots, and it is good. It is Brooke Ditto with for two on the block. Nas Hillman looking to get position down low. Swing it to a Kenry Johnson. Nas Hillman is not able to get it, but not able to get the pass from a Kenry Johnson, and a Kenry Johnson fouls going for the loose ball. Northwood ball. Tough, tough play there by Johnson's on, on the wing, looking to dump it in to Nas Hillman. Nas Hillman trying to, trying to box a girl out, get in position, obviously with the back to the basket. Gets the ball dumped into her, but doesn't go to the ball. She lets the ball play her, and the Northwood defender takes it right from her hands, and it really leads to an unfortunate foul there for Johnson, where when you have your back to the basket, and the ball's dumped into you. If it's low pass, high pass, whatever, you got to go get the ball through Nas Hillman. She lets it sit on her, and uh, it comes out with a Michigan turnover. And Northwood in the bonus now, very early on in the third quarter. Three minutes and 30, 46 seconds in. And she misses the first. This is Mackenzie Todd to the line. Mackenzie the freshman from Grand Ledge, Michigan. Grand Ledge, Michigan, about 15 minutes away from good old Portland, Michigan, where I come from. I've actually heard of this girl, Mackenzie Todd. She's a big name around the Lansing area. Like I said earlier, man, she's got that first step that is just absolutely so quick and so, so fast. Sitting at 5'6", she's going to have to get to the lane if she's going to be successful. And in the GLIAC, I, I could see her having a lot of success here in her freshman year. Kayla Robbins passes to Amy Dilk, driving baseline. And she's looking for someone to pass her. She's double teamed, pass to Haley Brown for three in the corner. No good, she's short. But ball's bouncing around, and Northwood gets it. It looked for a second like Kayla Robbins was going to get the rebound, but she got it stripped. Yep. Northwood now dribbling down the court. Amy Dilk on defense. Doubles with a Ken Ray Johnson, and... It's a foul on looks Amy like, Dill. Looks like Northwood's actually going to call a timeout as Michigan draws a double team. Yep, yep, Northwood's granted the yes. timeout before the foul was called. Fortunately there for the Wolverines. But, man, I mean, not just the offense has looked really quick. Kim Barnes and Rico's defense and the Michigan defense has been so active. I mean, they're already sitting at seven steals, three blocks, a lot of turnover, a lot of turnovers forced, 13 turn turnovers forced for the Wolverines. I mean, this has been a very active in-your-pants defense that's going to be so aggressive all year. And, and we know how good the Big Ten is this year. I mean, obviously, we saw Michigan coming in at 25, projected second in the coaches. Actually, excuse me, the media had, had, had Michigan finish a second in their preseason polls. And I believe the coaches had him at four. five, at four, four, yes. at four, yeah, yep. And we know the Big Ten's going to be tough. And Kim Barzarico, um, obviously, had she had a great run there at, at St. John's, where she actually she had that huge upset win at UConn. I, I believe it was 2011. I can't remember exactly the year, but Kim Barzarico is known for taking lesser programs. Not saying Michigan's a lesser program, but building up programs to a perennial powerhouse level. And and, and this is the best place for her to do it. Kim Barnes Rico is just a very, very intense person. She's a well-taught coach. She holds her players to high standards, and you can absolutely see it on the defensive end. I mean, this team is aggressive, they're fast, they're quick, and most of all, they're strong and they're tough. I mean, like I was talking about earlier, inside the paint, Nas Hillman, absolute beast. But you also see it around to everybody. You know, we're talking about Isabel Vergel. Offensively, she's a great defense. Defensively, she's also been very, very active. And we all know Emily Kaiser. 
and Haley Brown are also very, very active players on this Michigan Wolverines roster who have looked very good this far. So with the second half, uh, with, with two minutes and 18 seconds gone in the second half, Northwood has already scored eight points, matching their second quarter yeah. output, outscoring Michigan eight to four in this third quarter. What have you seen that maybe is there is the difference coming out of halftime for I Northwood? I mean, you've got to look at the foul totals right now. Michigan already, you talked about it earlier, Michigan's already at five fouls. They're in the bonus. I mean, I was talking about how aggressive they're being right now. They're being just a little too aggressive. And it's not all a Michigan fault. Northwood's done a very good job of swinging the ball around the zone, finding open shots, and getting to the lane, and really, really bringing the trouble to the Michigan defense. But it's the starting lineup is out there for the Wolverines, but you can tell they're kind of experimenting a little bit. They don't run 2-3 zone too often, and uh, they kind of fell back through here as they go back to man-to-man -to -man right now coming out of this timeout. And we have our first substitution of the second half with Isabel Verjao coming in. And it is inbounded. Northwood on the wing now. Gets a screen from Ditto. Kennedy Todd pass on the wing. Ditto posting up on Amy Dilk. Turns, hook shot with the left, no good. Amy Dilk fighting for the rebound and she gets it. Pushing the ball down the court, outlet to Haley Brown. Haley Brown has Isabel Verjao, but Isabel does not shoot. And pass and oh, almost an and one for Kayla Robbins. Kayla Robbins going to the line now, wasn't able to make that two-footer, but she was fouled. Yeah, very, very nice give and go there by Kayla Robbins. Dumping it into Verjao and then cutting right to the lane. Verjao finds her. She goes up for a tough layup there. Jazz falls off the falls off the rim and uh, doesn't convert there on the end one, but got two big free throw shots here for the Wolverines. And the first no good. Michigan still up 59 to 27. Zero points in the last two minutes and 19 seconds for Michigan. Both teams in the bonus. Yeah, free throw shooting has been um, not, not, not too horrible for the Wolverines, but now sitting at 11 of 16. Um, and we know, I mean, gosh, you look at the men's basketball team, that's been a problem for the last three or four years, team not be able to convert on the free throw line. But, you know, we are earlier in the season, early in the season, and the season really hasn't even started yet. This is an exhibition game. And it's some of those things you work on. And it, free, throw sh free throw shooting is always tough. It's always a pressure situation. And it's obviously shown here in the exhibition. And the second free throw was good for Robbins, and we have a substitution for Northwood. We have Morgan Kanishewski coming in from Allgress, Michigan. You know Michigan better than I, I, I do. I know Michigan, but I don't know what the heck Allgress is. <laughs> I think that's got to stand for something. I have no idea. It could be a North. It's, it's, it's somewhere on the mitten. It's All somewhere on the mitten. <laughs> <laughs> Just put, put the hand out and point somewhere. That's it's probably right. It's probably there. That's right. Northwood going to the line, fouled by Nas Hillman. First free throw is no good by Kenzie Seeley. Kenzie Seeley, second leading scorer from last year, led the team in assists. She's at the line now. She's three of 10 from the field with seven points, only one assist on the game. So not really hitting the box score in that regard. Amy Dilk dribbling down, finding a seam, passing out to Haley Brown. Haley Brown missed the shot. Excuse me, that was Kayla Robbins. Yeah, but and it is a jump ball. We it is saw, Michigan uh, ball. Yeah, we saw what uh, Amy Dilto's absolute best there. She brings the ball up the court, gets a little shimmy shake, drives to the lane, and then just kicks it out to Robbins. Robbins had a wide open shot. Unfortunately, it didn't go down for her. But, you know, that's, that, that's Amy Dilk's game. Last year was a leading, uh, a leading assist woman on the team. And she just has that factor. I mean, she's kind of, I mean, I, it's, you can't really say anybody's Magic Johnson, but it's kind of it's like that same style. Like, she's clearly a passer first. Last year, she led the team in assists. She was a very, very good ball handler. She's been handling the ball very well today. I mean, to this point, she only two turnovers, which, you know, that happens as a point guard. You're expecting to get turnovers, but just she's so safe with the ball. She's got great ball handling skills. And again, she's such a great, great passer. You know, she was part of that freshman class last year that was the highest rated freshman class in the history of, of, of Michigan women's basketball. And just, just an absolute great talent and a great point guard for the Wolverines. Last year, Amy Duke, as you said, great. And Magic Johnson type yeah. almost had a triple-double, scoring 19 yeah, points, nine exactly. rebounds, and seven assists against Which is, Washington. I mean, we see it a lot in NBA now with Russell Westbrook and James Harden, but people don't realize how tough that is for a point guard. You know, I mean, you obviously can get the points and assists easily, but that also means she's a great a, a great rebounder. She's very good. She's been active today. I mean, she's got she's got three rebounds, which I mean, for a point guard, it's very good. It's not triple double numbers, but she's she's just very active around the court. She she's just the she's the KBA type point guard. She's
She's a girl, so they get in your shorts, play some good defense, come down the floor, take care of the ball, ball handle, make great passes, and just play fundamental defense. She and will. She will stuff the stat sheet. Yeah, absolutely, and, and that's 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 the type of uh, the type of intensity that KBA always looks in her point guards. And uh, obviously, Amy Dill through her first two years at Michigan, first year, especially last year as a freshman, looked very very good and looking to have a good future here for the Wolverines. Starting all of the games last year yeah. as a sophomore, playing the second most minutes. I mean, sorry, as a freshman, yeah. even more impressive. As it's a freshman, crazy. who played crazy minutes, starting most, starting starting every game except for one, and just making her mark on the team, and then coming back sophomore year, looking to uh, build off of that. Yeah, and, and that's. This women's basketball, I mean, she, fortunately for her, she had avail availability where she'd come in as a freshman and have the point guard job. Last year she had Hallie Thorn, which was, as, uh, as on the big screen, Jawan Howard, the man here is in the house watching the women's basketball team. You got to love that from the leader of the men's basketball team. But, yeah, Amy Dilk just has that X factor for the Wolverines. It's going to be pretty beneficial all year. And it was just Amy Dilk inbounding the ball to Isabel Verigel off the timeout. Amy Dilk on the wing, sizing up her opponent. Oh, drives and... Misses the layup, but she got fouled. Almost an one. It bounced around the rim about five times before it went out. Amy Dilk going to the line. She hasn't attempted a free throw yet in this game, but she is two of four from the field with four points. And the first one is good. Bounced around the rim again, probably five or six times. Yeah. Well, if, if you look at Amy Dillick, she had big shoes to fill there from Caitlin Flaherty, Michigan's all-time leading scorer, coming in having, you know, t t to fill the shoes of a, a big hole that she had to replace. And like I said last year, just did a very good job of it. Yeah, and now missing the second free throw, Northwood bring the ball up the court, dribbling, weaving around, pass to Ten Kennedy Todd, Mackenzie Todd, I'm sorry, Mackenzie Todd at the top of the key, calling for a screen from Ditto using the screen, dribbling, pull up from the free throw line, gets her own rebound, and Amy Dilk in the passing lane, Isabel Verjao diving on the court, and it is a jump ball. Northwood will retain possession after Michigan got the last one. We have Michelle Sidor coming in for Kayla Robbins. We do have breaking news here from Nick Hornberg, oh, our do. guy here. Old Gray, Michigan is actually located next to Tawas, which is a couple, well, about 50, 50, 40 miles north of Saginaw. If you look on the mitten, it's on the east, northeast side of, of, the, of the beautiful mitten. Nick Hornberg, what a guy. He's always, guy. he's always on top of his game. He's texting us, letting us know the location of certain cities in the state of Michigan. Gotta love it. Appreciate everything he does Absolutely. here for WCBA. Absolutely. And Northwood inbounds the ball. Isabel Verjao on the, on the ball, pokes it loose, but Northwood retains possession. Nas Hillman playing defense and fouls. She fouls Kenzie Seeley as Kenzie Seeley goes for the layup and she will go to the line for two. Again, Kenzie Seeley, she's just been very, very active today. I mean, she's, she is a, a leading, the leading shot taker here for the Timberwolves early on, three of 10 from the field. But her impact really hasn't been in, in, in the shots. I mean, she's only 30% from the floor, which isn't great. But she's just been all of the court, fast defense, very fast feet with the ball and uh, did a nice job and is getting here to the line here for the Timberwolves. In the second half, Michigan's defense has held up its end of the bargain, but the yeah. offense just isn't really doing anything with no field goals in the last three minutes and 29 seconds. Yeah, and it does look a little different from the first half. First half, there was uh, pretty much just a run and gun offense, getting the rebound, running down the floor, trying to find those rim runners and, and, and getting easy buckets. Here, more, more lethargic, more just a typical half-court offense. And she missed both free throws. And Michigan brings the ball down the court with Isabel Verjao making a turnaround mid-range jumper, getting on the board. Now she has 16 points on 7 of 8 shooting. Northwood driving down. Isabel Verjao with the rebound on the missed layup attempt. Gives it off to Amy Dilk. Amy Dilk dribbling down the court. Gives it to Akenzie. Oh, and it is a missed layup. That, that was Aken Akenzie Johnson with the missed layup, but she got fouled. So she will be going to the line for two. Yeah, very nice job there by Mackenzie Todd, even though she was called with a blocking foul. She was in position, she just kind of scooted that leg out a little bit. 
getting the foul, sending Johnson to the line. But man, has Isabel Verschall just looked very, very good today. We were talking about her skills with the back to the basket. She just gets that ball, she turns around. It's almost like a little Dirk Nowitzki move. She steps back it a little is. bit, throws it up there, and man, she's what seven of eight from the floor today. Just looking really fundamental down in the paint. It's it's nice because Michigan's obviously having that gaping hole last year from Hallie Thom, her graduating. 100 percent. And Verschall being able to step in the shoes just a little bit today. And a Kenray Johnson making the first and the second free throws. We have a sub coming in, Priscilla Smeeg. Smeeg coming in for Kenray. Kenray going to the bench now with 11 points on four of six shooting. Smeeg coming into the game. Now we have, is that Danielle Rausch is in the game. Danielle Rausch guarding the ball. Pass to wing and up for the layup and Miss Isabel Verjao all over the court getting the rebound. Danielle Rausch passing it up to Michelle Cedor, the scorer on the wing. Pass to Nas Hillman. Nas Hillman, and guess what? She's going to the line again. <laughs> Seems to be a theme here in the third quarter. It all started from Daniel Rosh trying to take a charge on the other end here on defense. Gets the outlet pass and just runs up the floor like she's been known to do. She's a very, very quick guard. Gets to the floor. It gets Hillman in the paint, and Hillman goes to the line for the Wolverines. Nas Hillman, the leading scorer from last year's yeah. team, will get points no matter what. If the defense doesn't want her to score yeah, a bucket with it, a field goal, she'll bad. go to the line. <laughs> it's too bad. Nat, I mean, it's, the funny thing is, Nas came off the bench last year. She, yeah. she was a, the Big Ten, or the Big Ten six man of the or six woman of the year. And was just she, she was just very good all year. She came off the bench. She's just so tough. She's gritty. She she likes to get physical down in the paint. Good rebounder, good defender, and obviously, like you said, just such a great scorer for the Wolverines. Yes, Nas Hillman had eight double doubles last year. Yeah. Reaching double figures 20 times, having eight 20 point games, even though she was coming off the bench. Yeah. So making As good use man, of her minutes. Exactly. As a six man, that's, those are very, very important minutes. And she misses a free throw. North. Northwood getting the ball, dribbling down the court. On the corner, driving baseline, looking for someone to pass to. She's in the key, she's in the key, and she passes Isabella, I mean, sorry, Isabella Verjao gets her hands on it, but it goes out of bounds. And we have Emily Kaiser coming in for Nas Hillman. Emily Kaiser, number two or three center with Isabella Verjao. Mm -hmm. Isabel Verjao and Emily Kaiser in at the same time yep. really gives Michigan a height advantage. Yeah, and they've had the height advantage pretty much all game, but the nice thing about Emily Kaiser, she can step out and shoot the three. Watch her in warm up. She's just got a really nice pure shot, and you know she can step out and be a threat. And it's a jump ball after nice. Northwood passes it in and goes for the shot. Emily Kaiser stuffing the Northwood oh, yeah. opponent, not letting her get the shot off, and it is a jump ball. Emily Kaiser will take the ball out on the baseline. Danielle Roush bringing the ball up now. And yeah, she's looking. Priscilla Smeenge doesn't get the ball. It is knocked out by the Northwood defender. It is Northwood ball as she poked it loose and then it hit Danielle Roush. Yes. Northwood bring the ball up the court. Danielle Roush on the defense. Passes it to Ditto. Ditto pass to the wing. Dribbling up the court, weaving through. Pass to the other, to the right wing, now to the left wing, cross court pass, driving in, trying to get around Isabel Verjao. Isabel Verjao with the foul on number 23, Sophia D'Amelia. D'Amelia is the sister of Ava D'Amelia, the freshman from New Boston, Michigan. Yeah, nice little, nice little euro step from Sophia, getting to the lane, getting around Emily Kaiser, getting to the basket and drawing the foul. I, mean, it's, I think that's the prettiest play in all basketball. When you get someone to year all around somebody and finish up around the lay or finish up around the rim, it's just you can tell their basketball play when they can hit that move. It's just I don't know. Like you've seen Russell Westbrook doing NBA all the time, and it's just so pure and so nice. And we have Sophia D'Amelia making the first of two and then missing the second with Isabel Verjao getting the rebound and a foul on Northwood on the loose ball. Very, very nice hustle there from Verjao from the opposite block. Rebound goes away from her, and she still hustles across the paint to fight for that rebound, get the jump ball, and get Wolverines the ball. And that's just the type of culture that KBA has addressed and formed here for this Michigan women's basketball team. As they said in their promo and their hype video, they are the hardest working team in America. And if they want to make an impact here in the Big Ten, which you know they're going to, and they want to make a step here in the, in the NCAA tournament, that's the type of things they're going to need to do if they want to keep going. Work hard, fight for those loose balls, block out in the paint, and try to be physical and tough. And if they do that, this team's got a really, really nice shot this year. And Michigan's in the bonus. Isabel Verjao misses the first of two. 
and she shoots the second, and it is too far on back iron, misses the second. And Northwood dribbling the ball up, cross-court pass, and on the wing is Ditto. Ditto driving across the court, trying to get a look up and under, and no good. Emily Kaiser with the rebound, outlet to Smingy. Smingy dribbling down the court, goes for the layup, trying to, jar, trying to jar, draw a charge is Northwood. Priscilla Smingy does not make the layup. Northwood gets the rebound, dribbling down the court now. Danielle Rausch on defense. Number four for Northwood. Passes it off. Isabel Verizal, I'm sorry, Emily Kaiser letting her Northwood opponent slip through. That was Ditto with the layup. And now it was Northwood getting the passing lanes, but they are not able to control the defensive steal. And Smingy with the ball. Pump fake pass to Seedor now, Seedor driving base. Oh, with the spin move oh, and with the layup. What a move. <laughs> what a move by Michelle Seedor, the freshman from, from New Jersey. <laughs> like you said, man, absolutely great move. Going to her left, spinning to the right, and then finishing beautifully with that right hand Seedor. And she just pumps herself up a little bit with a nice little clap. Gets the Wolverine bench fired up. Just That's a nice right. move here late in the third quarter to get the Wolverines energized and ready. Great move, and now we have Michigan outscoring Northwood 13 to 12 this quarter. Northwood pulls up for three, and it is no good. And it is Smiggy, I'm uh, sorry, Sidor with the rebound. Sidor dribbling down the court, going, trying to go coast to coast, but pulls up on the wing and does not travel. She had her pivot foot. And it is now Emily Kaiser posting up, making a move, spinning, and one with the layup. Driving past her opponent, a little, little spin move, channeling her Michelle Sidor. <laughs> Nice little action here from the Wolverines. Again, Kaiser stuck in the paint and double team and just splits it with a clean little spin move, or a spin move, gets through the contact, finishes the basket, and going to the line here for the Wolverines. And does not convert the and one. Isabel Verichow tries to get the rebound, but knocks that out of bounds. Northwood ball, Michigan up 70 to 31 with 48 seconds left in this third quarter. It's been sort of a different look here for the Wolverines. The first half, like I said, run and gun type of offense, shoot and run, get the ball quick, get the outlet, and get to the basket. Second half has been more of a lethargic half-court offense. Both have been effective for what they're trying to do. D'Amelia driving, pass out. D'Amelia gets the ball again on the three-point wing, and she shoots, and it's no good. A common theme for Northwood today. Northwood shooting the three is one of 10, one of 11 now after that miss. Michigan, Emily Kaiser with the rebound, and she's fouled after she gets the rebound. As Michigan's in the bonus, they will be going to the line for two. Emily Kaiser hasn't attempted a free throw on the day. She's two of two from the field, though, with four points. No, I, I do got to say, I share a couple of classes with Emily Cl Kaiser, both in John U. Bacon's class. If anybody knows about the author, John U. Bacon, graduate here of University of Michigan, he is a very strict man. If you're late, he is not a happy guy. So Emily has a class on the other side of campus, and every single day she is out of breath getting to class because she's got to run from the south end to the north end because she does not want to be late for class. And you can tell she's a hard worker just by that because, like I said, man, she is out of breath and she is sweating just to be on time for class. And I, you got to love that. That's just awesome. Helps out her stand. On the, court, <laughs> yeah, stamina on the court, on the court. We have 11 seconds left. Northwood driving, and they drive baseline. Did she step out of bounds? No. Isabel Verizal trying to get the block. Doesn't. Emily Kaiser passes up to Danielle Roush. Danielle Roush two to Michelle Cedor for three. As time expires, oh, oh, bounces out around the rim. Does not go down. Michigan heading to the fourth quarter with a 40-point lead, outscoring. Northwood 16 to 12 in that fourth quarter, in that third quarter, excuse me. Yeah, you gotta love the awareness there by Danielle Roush. Knowing with five seconds left, she's a three on two fast break. She drives, commits both of the defenders to come to her on the left side of the paint, dish it off to the right, where Smig has a wide open three that just all so barely missed, rolled out at the very end. And it's just, it, it, that's what's so awesome about these kind of games. And, and, you know, both of us are athletes, so we both know, like, these type of blowout games are so much fun to play in because you can just play freely and you can work on things that you know you're not great at. Great at. And the Wolverines are clearly trying to do that today. Like, like I talked about in the first half, you can tell this team is going to be a run and gun type of team all year. Both Danielle and Amy Dilk are very, very quick. They get the ball in the outlet and they run down the court. Second half, they're really, really focusing on, on working on that half-court offense, trying to develop the pick and roll, trying to get the inside-outside game going, the drive and dish, because those are some things later on the season you might have to work on. So it's been maybe a little bit less of an exciting fair on the offense event for the Wolverines, but you could tell they're absolutely working on things to help this team better down the road. 
Yeah, their offense has uh, cooled down a little bit at 59% uh, shooting field goals. And something that's a little eye-opening to me and a little concerning is their free throw percentage of 61%. They've gone to the line 26 times, which is outstanding. If they're Anthony Davis, they would make all of those. Oh, yeah. As he dropped 40 <laughs> points, 40 and 29 in three yeah. quarters. Yeah. Crazy. Unbelievable. But they're I mean, 16 of 26. So may maybe if they're in the bonus in this fourth quarter, it would be great to see Michigan yeah. make some free throws. What, what are you looking for from this Michigan team in the fourth quarter? I mean, I just want to keep, I just want to keep seeing that they're engaged and active in this basketball game. I mean, you can, it's such an easy trap of 40 in the exhibition game to uh, just kind of relax and play, not get placed here in, in the fourth quarter. But you just know Kim Barnes and Rico is just not going to let that happen. You know they're going to be tough, diving for loose balls, being scrappy on the boards and. I just want to see this team still active and still working on things to help this team down the road. We didn't see many bench players in that third quarter. No, well, if you look on this Michigan roster, they only, they only have 11 girls yeah. on the roster, so it's, it's not like it's not like going to the benches. Like, right. you know, they're not bringing any horrible people off the bench. And this team is from 1 to 11, they're all very capable players that can make a difference on this team. And you know KBA really wants to work on things, whether it's the starters, the, the first girl or sixth girl, fifth girl off the bench. They're going to work on everybody. So, like you said, maybe down the road you might see, you know, some of the bench players coming on, but th there's not many of them. And now the start of the fourth quarter, Northwood with the ball passes out to Ditto. Ditto driving baseline with the spin. And Haley Brown playing defense on her, swarming her pass out to the top of the key. We have Akinre, Akinre playing defense on her, Akinre Johnson. And Ken Ray Johnson switching, still playing defense. Nas Hillman now off the screen playing defense. Gets by her. Oh, what a layup. Sweet little move. She's little shimmy a, and then get past Nas Hillman. Yeah, Allie Kaiser for Northwood is another girl that's been looking really impressive for me here. Another girl that's really, really quick off the dribble. Again, only coming in at 5'8". Three, three short little guards here for the Northwood Timberwolves that are very quick off the dribble. Michigan on offense now. Maddie Nolan dishes it off to Nas Hillman. Nas Hillman up and misses the layup, but she's fouled. She'll go to the line for two. Michigan hasn't really been able to convert those foul shots. Yeah. As I said during the break, 16 of 27 yeah. from the line. And they haven't really had any uh, many and ones today. Mm -hmm. and a, lot of, a lot of missed layups, but getting to the line and then absolutely. unfortunately missing the free throws as Nas Hillman misses the first of two. Now at the back end of the two free throw attempts. And it is no good again. But Haley Brown chases down the rebound. Haley Brown passes out. Amy Dilk wide open on the wing. Shoots and no good. Haley Brown gets the offensive rebound. Pass the defender. Misses the layup. And it's a foul. Another foul and missed layup. Gotta love the hard work there from Haley Brown. I, like I was talking about in the break, I want to see this team still active and physical on the boards. And Haley Brown proves it right there. Get two offensive rebounds for the Wolverines. One off the free throw. One off the missed three by Amy Dilk. Gets the rebound. Drives to the lane and gets fouled. You just you, you gotta love the effort here from the Wolverines and Haley Brown. She's not exactly a prolific scorer, but for her, her, her role in this team is she's gonna be great defensively and she's gonna be great on the boards. Today she's been absolutely that tough in the lane, tough in the tough on on the post defense, and then it's it just been an awesome rebounder all game for the Wolverines. And she makes the front end of the two free throws. About to shoot the second. Haley Brown did shoot free throws. Not too well last year at 67%, making 26 of 39. But she made the first and missed the second there. Ball off Michigan. Northwood taking the ball out now. Michigan with a 39-point lead. I don't think Northwood will be able to come back in this one. But <laughs> it's as we expected. I do think it's safe to say that. <laughs> Michigan's got a comfortable lead here early in the fourth quarter. But like we were talking about, there's always things to work on as you still see the starters here out in the fourth quarter. That's right. <laughs> now someone playing defense now. Northwood driving, passes out to the corner. Passes to the wing, drives past the Kenray. And layup is good for Northwood. Northwood leading Michigan now in the fourth quarter, 4-1. to one. Again, Sophie, Sophia D'Amelia, just another nice little Euro step, getting the lane around Nas Hillman and finishing well. This Northwood basketball team is looking really, really good in the second half. That's right. Amy Dilk now on the wing, gets past her defender with the little with the little jump shot from the block, and it's good. Pull up, shoot, bang. Two points for Amy Dilk. Northwood dribbling the ball down the court now. Amy Dilk on the defense. Now pass to the wing. A Ken Ray Johnson playing defense on Ditto. Ditto shoots, and no good. And it is the rebound by Dilk. Dilk dribbling down the court. 
They do not have numbers, so she pulls up from the three-point line. Does not shoot. Shoots off, picks up her dribble. Nas Hillman has the ball at the block. And good on the layup. Looking for the foul. No call, but she got the layup. Two points for Nas Hillman. Northwood dribbling down the court now. On the wing, calling for the screen. Calling for the screen is Ali Kieser. Ali Kieser dribbling with a, uh, with a Ken Ray playing defense. She's calming it down now at the top of the key, calling for a play, calling for a screen now. And it is Jayla Strickland with the screen. Nas Hillman trying to poke the ball loose, doesn't get it. Back, back door cut, no, no good. It is Maddie Nolan with the steal, passing it. Haley Brown Ooh. and numbers, and she gets the layup. Maddie Nolan on the ground, limping a little bit. And we have a stoppage. Do think the referee stopped, yep, stopping the game a little bit to make sure Maddie Nolan is all right. And we all talk about, man, that Patrick Mahomes no look pass. Maddie Nolan coming down the court, giving that no look there to Haley Brown. And Haley Brown finish it. Just a smooth little play there for the Wolverines. And uh, just, I mean, just you're seeing it from 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 one to eleven. The guards and the big the big girls for the Wolverines just playing so well. Just been really nice fundamental game for the Wolverines. And Northwood with the ball now. It is number 23, Sophia D'Amelia, pulling up with the turnaround jumper. It's good and one. Very, very nice move again there by Sophia D'Amelia. Again to the paint, knocking her girl all the way back to the basket. Just a little baby hook with that left hand, getting the and one. Man, she has looked absolutely fantastic here in the second half. Had three really nice moves to the basket, converting on all of them, and getting to the line on two of them for an and one. Just a nice thing here to come out and close out the game for the Timberwolves as Sophia D'Amelia is looking absolutely excellent here in the second half. And the second free throw is good. Kayla Robbins coming in for a Ken Ray Johnson. Amy Doak trying to get a fast break but knocked out of bounds by Northwood. Trying to get the ball at Nas, Nas Hillman under the rim. And it will be Amy Doak taking the ball out. We have 6.56 left in this fourth quarter. Michigan a comfortable 40-point lead. Oh, yeah. Nas Hillman gets the ball on in the inbound. Pass out to Maddie, Maddie Nolan. Maddie Nolan Driving past her defender, kicks out to Amy Dilk. Amy Dilk drives baseline with the reverse, doesn't go. But it is off of Haley Brown going for the rebound, Northwood ball. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny. You look at the backup guards coming in, and <laughs> you know they're instinctively taught to be a hurry-up type of offense because as soon as Daniel Rush or Maddie Nolan get the ball, poof, they're right down the floor trying to get a little run and gun offense. But you see Amy Dilk trying to slow things down a little bit. You can just tell. Just by off instincts, this team is going to be run a gun team all, type of team all year. And now we have Northwood dribbling the ball at the top of the key. Haley Brown defending with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Northwood trying to make something happen with a screen by Ditto. Hillman on the ball now. It seems like every time they're trying to attack Hillman. Yeah. Maddie Nolan playing defense, one second left on the shot clock, and that was just thrown to nobody out of bounds by Northwood. I got to say, absolutely phenomenal defense there by Nas Hillman. Switched on the tough point guard, Mackenzie Todd, a girl we're talking about from Grand Ledge. A really, really tough situation. The point guard on his center, and Hillman stayed right in front of her playing great defense, forcing the turnover for the Wolverines. And that's a good thing to know. You know if you can switch on screens, that's a great thing for your defense. That's right. And it is Michigan ball, and Jess Robin, I mean, sorry, Kayla Robbins passed to Maddie Nolan, knocked out of bounds. It'll be Amy Dilk taking the ball out on the sideline. Quick little update from the professional world. The game seven of the World Series, the game you and I are very looking forward to watching as soon as we get home. Houston Astros up 1-0 in the bottom of the second. And while we were talking about that, there was a charge by Kayla Robbins. Trying to get a layup going down to the left block, but charging. And that is three fouls on Michigan now. And it is Northwood ball. They're taking it up the court now. Again, still very interested to see that majority of the Michigan starting lineup. It's actually, yeah, four out of the five starters for the Michigan Wolverines are still in this game. Hillman, Brown, um, Robbins, and then Dilk. Yes. And it is Ditto turn around trying to get it, but no. And Haley Brown with the rebound. Amy Dilk cost court pass to Kayla Robbins. Kayla Robbins driving, and she's fouled but cannot finish the layup. She's going to the line for two. Let's see if Kayla Robbins yeah. can get these two free throws to go in the basket as Michigan needs to step up their free throw game. For 17 sure. of 31, 54.8% on the day. That won't cut it in Big no, Ten play. Absolutely not. As Vergeau and both Ross check in, or Roche, excuse me, check in. Like you said, man, like the free throws, it's, it, usually you see free throw shooting kind of struggle early on in the season. I mean, people don't really shoot free throws in practice. It's hard to simulate 
a free throw type of scenario in practice. Obviously, you can especially late coaches. game free throws. Yeah, exactly. When you're tired, things are not going exactly right for you. You got to get to the line to convert. It's something you work on throughout the season. And teams usually struggle on early in the season. And Kayla Robbins make the first of two. Now shooting the second. Chrysler Center quiet for the shot. And she makes it. She has two of two on those attempts. Northwood trying to push the ball, trying to catch the Michigan defense sleeping. And it is a travel violation by Kenzie Seely. Kenzie Seely, the junior from Alma, Michigan. Michigan taking the ball out now. Haley Brown to Danielle Roush. Danielle, Danielle Roush in the game for Amy Dilk. Isabel Verjao also checked in for Nas Hillman there. Haley Brown passes to Isabel Verjao, but it is too high. Isabel cannot, cannot get the catch, cannot get the pass. You could tell this is another type of thing that the Wolverines are trying to work on. If they're not, if they're not really successful at getting out and running, and they have to set into a half, uh, in, into a half court set, they're looking to go inside almost every time. Whether it's Hillman, Verjao, Brown, Kaiser, anybody, all four have been pretty successful with their back to the basket. Their post game has been pretty successful for the Wolverines. Their inside game helps out their outside game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it is Michigan with their long rebound pushing it. And it is Kayla Robbins with the layup on the other end on the fast break from Danielle Roush. Danielle Roush with five assists on the game yeah. in 12 minutes. Again, the point guards for the Wolverines have been absolutely fantastic at facilitating in this offense. And that is a kick ball. Northwood pushing the ball up the court. Kick ball by Isabel Verjao. And it's the media timeout. After the media timeout, Emily Kaiser will be coming in the game for, if, I, I believe, Haley, Haley Brown, but yeah, I'm not probably. sure. Yeah, You know Kaiser's a, a big girl. She's, you know, she likes to get down on the paint. So you, you'd assume it would be uh, Verjao or Haley Brown coming in. But nonetheless, the Wolverines are 444 to go up, 82 to 38. As this game closes out, and we're looking forward on the season. Some big things coming up. We got the Western, hosting the Western Michigan Broncos. Game one here at the Chrysler Center. This team, like we were talking about, finished the pick second by the media and fourth by the coaches in the Big Ten. A lot could happen for this Wolverine ball club. Inside, outside, they looked very good. We know Amy Dilk is a very, very good facilitator. And we know down in the paint, whether it's been Bears, always been very successful today, or Hillman, they got a lot of options on this offense. And so far, early on here, we know it's a D2 opponent. You know, coming from the GLIAC, they're not going to be great competition. But when things that needed to be executed had to happen, they were executing them. And the Wolverines have looked very good very early here. Yes, it seems like most of the offense for Michigan, like we said, will be inside-outside game. Passing Absolutely. it in and then trying to get it finishes at the rim. It may just be because Northwood is a smaller opponent, but they, sure. do, have, they do have players at 6'2", 6'1". They have, they have opponents that are close to Nas Hillman yeah. height. But Nas Hillman and Berejao, each with 16 points on the day. But each of them shooting 50% from the line, yeah. leaving points on the board. Absolutely, yeah. Like, that's on the table. Absolutely perfect. I mean, you're absolutely right. This Michigan team could easily put up. I mean, they've missed 14 free throws in the day. You probably got to knock down half of those ones you missed. You're shooting 57%. Usually good basketball teams shoot around 75 to 80%. You know, that could be different between, you know, uh, two losses in the Big Ten or no losses. You know, those are the type of things yeah. you got to work on. As, you know, we were just talking about the schedule early Big on for Ten. the Wolverines. The Big Ten is full of great teams. And like we said, before before yeah. they play the Big Ten games, they play Western Michigan to start off the season. But yeah. the big games come November 23rd against yeah. Notre Dame in Ann Arbor. Yeah, big and game. Then, big yes. game for the Wolverines. Put yeah. themselves on the national scale. If they can play the Fighting Irish tough as the Wolverines did this Saturday and the That's football right. team look good, if they can do the same as the football team and get this Fighting Irish team a little rattled, a little tough here in the Chrysler Arena, they can sort of put themselves on the map. And then a, another non-conference game against Syracuse yeah. uh, on ESPN in Ann Arbor on December 5th. And now we're back to the game. Northwood inbounds it, and it is a layup by number 22, Ava D'Amelia. Michigan passing the ball up the court, trying to trying to make something happen quickly. Kicks it back out. Maddie Nolan now on the on the wing, driving past her defender up with the right, and it is a blocking foul, and it's a missed layup. But she was fouled. She would go to the line for two. Yep, as it looks like the Northwood defender was inside that cylinder under the basket. Definitely her feet were absolutely set. She was pretty much there for a good full second. But number 12 for the Northwood, uh, Kenzie Seeley is inside the cylinder and gets a blocking call here, sending Nolan to the, to the line. Maddie Nolan trying to get her four, first points of the day. She was 0 of 1 from the field, missing a three-point attempt. And she makes the first free throw. And she makes the second. Now the only... 
Michigan player who has not scored is Danielle Roush, who is 0 of 1 from the field, but she has contributed greatly to yeah. this team with five assists. And now we have Northwood. Oh, and it is Kayla Robbins getting in the passing lane with the fast break layup, and it is good. Kayla Robbins, 15 points on the day, second highest behind Varejao and Hillman. Yeah, the 19th turnover force for this Wolverines defense, like we were talking about earlier. Very active, very quick, great hands, and a lot of those turnovers lead into points for the Wolverines. Northwood passing it, number three, Mackenzie Todd for three, and it is good. That is only their second three-pointer of the day. They are two of 13 now. Danielle Roush pushing the ball up the court, taking a second, looking at who she has. Passes it to Maddie Nolan. Maddie Nolan uh, looking for Isabel Verjao. Isabel Verjao on the top of the key to the wing. We have, uh, we have Kayla Robbins. Kayla Robbins passes it to Danielle Roush. Danielle Roush about to shoot for her second shot attempt, but Isabel Verjao with the screen, and it is a foul called on her moving screen. And Kayla Robbins checking out of the game with Michelle Sior, the, the freshman, coming in. We have all three freshmen on the court right. now at the same time, Michelle, Maddie, and Isabel. Yeah, that's the one thing that Kim Martirico really has changed in this Michigan Wolverines program. Not only are they relevant on the national scale in terms of playing, but recruiting, they've really changed their, their ways, certainly, with Vergel coming in and Cedar, two recruits that are highly touted. You know, getting young talent in here for the Michigan Wolverines. And I'm sure Maddie Nolan would have been highly regarded had she not missed most yeah, of her she, senior exactly, year. Yeah, exactly, exactly. She had the injury in her entire senior year. It actually turned out to be Zionsville um, her the leading scorer in that at that high school, so obviously you know she's a good player as well. Yes, and now Michigan ball after the air ball by Northwood, pass to Isabel Verjao, make that Emily Kaiser, Emily Kaiser wide open layup, lost her defender, a little move on her defender, and good for two. Northwood now dribbling the ball down the court with 2:45 remaining in this game. Maddie Nolan playing defense on number 24, Hunter Vitalia. And it is Michelle Sidor playing defense. Isabel Verja with the help after Michelle was driven by and with the block. Danielle Roush bringing the ball down the court. Pass out to Michelle Sidor. Michelle Sidor looking like she's going to pull up but doesn't. Oh, with the cut, Isabel Verja from Emily Kaiser. Good for two. Very nice. Again, a lot of action here. The, the ball's in the paint. Kaiser looks opposite on the Verja cut and it's a wide open layup for the Wolverines. Very, very nice, well-executed play there by Michigan. Emily Kaiser getting her hand in the passing lane here on defense, but Northwood retains possession. Now we have Mackenzie Todd putting a move on Danielle Roush, pulling up, misses. Maddie Nolan getting high up on the ladder and fouled as she gets the rebound. She will go to the line as Michigan's in the bonus. Yeah, nice. I mean, this Wolverines team... It doesn't matter what the score is. It's 90 to 43. Wolverines obviously have a big lead here. But they are still just so, so scrappy on the boards, on loose balls, in the paint. Like, it doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a steal attempt or a block attempt or rebound. It doesn't matter. Michigan's going to fight for the ball. And that, we have been said it a million times. That's the type of atmosphere that Kim Martirico has instilled here in this Michigan Wolverine program. Scrappy team we have here in Michigan. And Maddie Nolan makes the first of her two attempts. She has a little Z uh, Lonzo ball yeah, shot, little, like little to the to the to the, the left shoulder across yeah. the body, making the second. I'm not gonna argue with it. It's <laughs> they working. Keep doing it. Hit what, both what is she now? Four, there for four the from Wolverines. the line. Oh yeah. She is Again, remember that little swim line, move yeah. she had earlier in the third That's quarter. That's right. That's right. Yeah, maybe she's been watching a little Lonzo tape. Heck, she <laughs> might want to watch the Lamelo tape too. He's looking good he down there in, good. in the in the land down under. Yep. Yep. Over at the New Zealand Breakers. Yes. <laughs> Proud team of Big Cat PFT there at Pardon My Take. <laughs> and now Northwood with the ball. Maddie Nolan playing defense with the screen. Now Emily Kaiser pass to the wing. Michelle Sewer pass cross court. Emily Kaiser co closing out. And the bank is apparently open. Wide open, baby. It is open on a Wednesday night. <laughs> and it is for three Northwood. And now we have Maddie Nolan dribbling the ball down the court. He gets the ball passed down to Emily Kaiser at the block. Emily Kaiser trying to put a move on, spinning around, no good. Uh, doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't put the shot up. Passed out to Verjao. Verjao for three, stretching that range, no good. And Smeegy with the offensive rebound and goes up and is fouled. Smeegy, excuse me, Smeegy. Yeah, there you go again. Michigan climbing back in the offensive rebounds, making that the 11th, the 11th offensive rebounds for the Wolverines compared to the Northwood Timberwolves eight. Just very, very active again, just all day. Just so, so aggressive as Smeegy goes to the line here. Smeegy making the first, getting on the board. She now has one point on the day. She's going to 
have her second free throw attempt of the day. She was she did try one field goal attempt but missed earlier, and now she's trying her second field uh, free throw attempt, and it's good. Two of two on the day from the line. Northwood dribbling the ball down the court. Michelle Sidor defending, pass out to the wing. Isabel Verjao on defense gets the screen. She passed passed to uh, pass to Ditto with. Sidor on the ball, Verjao now deep defending, pass to the top of the key, it is Sidor. Sidor pokes the ball loose, but, but Northwood retains possession, five seconds left on the shot clock. Step back, pass to the top of the key, at the wing, and she gets it off, no she doesn't. The shot clock violation, 42.6 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Looks like Michigan will get one shot left. Yeah, very nice defensive possession there for the Wolverines. We saw Emily Kaiser hedge on the screen there, keep up with the quick point guard freely, or Seeley, excuse me, and just keep, you know, keep penetration away from the hoop for the Wolverines, drawing that, you know, shot clock violation. Michelle Sidor passing from the wing to the top of the key. Isabel Verge out uh, directing her to the corner. Smingy now with the ball at the top of the key. Isabel Verjao giving Michelle the screen on the left wing, and she drives, and no good. And the offensive rebound, and one, Emily Kaiser. Finally, conversion on an and one. <laughs> yeah, Kaiser for the day, sitting four of four for nine points. It's about to see if she can get here to double digits. Again, another offensive rebound late here in the fourth quarter for the Wolverines, putting up now a, a 50-burger here on the... Uh, on the Northwood Timberwolves, up 96 as she converts a free throw, up 97, 246, late here with 19 seconds to go. And Michigan now has five players in double digits. Like, like we mentioned earlier in the first half, a lot of depth on yeah. this team. And not one person real. Oh, and there's Michelle Sidor with the seal. And she is blocked on the other end off of her 4.8 seconds remaining. And Northwood will just inbound the ball and not much going on now. But like I was saying, we have a lot of depth okay. and we're not really depending on one person to score, which is going to be really big for when it comes time for the big games in Big Ten. And Berjao getting that out of here as time expires. Oh, <laughs> Cheers, way to the, the last three. whistle. Wow. Oh, as the Wolverine bench comes in, celebrates around Berjao as she puts the icing on the cake. No, she swat. said, no, ma'am. <laughs> and it is a Michigan win. Win by 51 points, 97 to 46, and we will have a Michigan game, Michigan women's game next week, and this one will count November 8th on Friday, Western Michigan, 7 p.m. in Ann Arbor. WCBN will cover that game. It'll be again on YouTube, and um, in the meantime, we will have the Michigan men's basketball game on Friday against. Who, who are they playing against? They, it's, a, it's another exhibition. Yeah, it's an exhibition Doesn't game against another GLIAC team. I believe it is Saginaw Valley State. I will check. It is Saginaw it Valley It is State. Saginaw Valley State, yes. So Saginaw another, another Valley GLIAC State. opponent here. Obviously, talk about Saginaw Valley State from Saginaw as Juwan Howard is just entering or exiting the building. You know, that's also a very treating game, but you got to look back on today and what the women's basketball team did here. 97-46, a couple very, very nice efforts here for the Wolverines. Nas Hillman coming away with the big day, ending her day with 16 points. Kayla Robbins with 15, and then Verjao, the freshman coming in from Brazil with 18 points, eight of 10 from the floor. Wolverines end their game 59.6% shooting from the floor. Big win for the Wolverines, inside, outside, running, going, half court offense, everything looked great today. They were quick, they were, they were concise, they were very, very consistent. Wolverines come out with a 51 point victory over the Northwood Timberwolves. With this one-two punch of Vera Zhao and Hillman, I think that this team will be very competitive. Absolutely. I don't know if many teams, the Big Ten is very good, but most teams will not be able to compete with this height. Yeah. And we would just like to say thank you for those who are listening on YouTube. And that is all for Zach Corson, Andy Landlaw, and Jack Molino. Thank you and good night.